Welcome to a new vlog. Today it's a multimeter review because we haven't done one in a while and uh, here I have the smart digital multimeter which sounds like a generic name. No obvious uh, branding on the box but uh, granted it is featuring a multimeter on the box. It's a color image printed on the uh, box. It's not often we see that on these cheap meters. And on the back the meter is shown in a different color, is full black holster. Uh, and we get a model number sticker, it's uh, ANV01. So this probably indicates the Anang brand. We've looked at uh, Anang multimeters in the past in uh, Vollog 114 and others. And I'm gonna say this again, Anang does not make multimeters. Anang is just a company that rebrands existing multimeters made by other companies. Uh, even this box is generic, so they just slap this label on the box. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper, so it's definitely worth checking them out. Inside the box, we get the multimeter, which has a green uh, holster, a uh, set of test leads, and a user manual. I got this so long ago that I don't remember if I ordered it with a green holster or not. It's been sitting in a mailbag bin for a while now. But it looks uh, kind of funky with this uh, green and you can get it in a bunch of different bright colors. Uh, I know it might be too much for some people, uh, but I like it. And it's uh, confirmed this is uh, branded Anang on the multimeter uh, front panel. And the first thing that stands out is the uh, lack of, of a uh, rotary selection switch. This meter only has three switches, NCV, on off and hold backlight but it can measure AC voltage, uh, DC voltage, AC current, DC current, resistance, continuity and frequency they say. So it will be doing uh, automatic detection of these measurements as well as auto ranging. This is a 4000 count through RMS multimeter. It's rated CAT to 600 volts. Um, here is a uh, screenshot with the specs of this uh, multimeter. The accuracy is not overly specified, so it might meet those specs, but it definitely lacks some resolution. For example, on the resistance measurement, we only get one ohm of resolution. It uses two AAA batteries, and I think that's a decent compromise uh, given the form factor of this multimeter. Even though it's not specified on the battery cover what type of battery it uses, I really like that um, uh, multimeters have the type of battery specified on the battery cover. Um, it's pretty easy to do that in the molding process, so I'm not sure why they didn't. Uh, on the back we also get a uh, flashlight. Uh, we're definitely seeing a trend in the Asian market on this. They are placing flashlights on everything and ultimately, who knows, it might even be useful when probing in some dark corner. Let me show you something interesting in the user manual. If we look on this page, we can see they manually wrote something with the pen in the uh, counts uh, table, as well as a tick here for the uh, backlight. They probably made a mistake in, uh, in production and said, we're not just going to bin thousands of uh, printed user manuals, we're going to rework them manually and some employee had to fix all of these user manuals. I suppose that was a pretty shitty task to be given as an employee. The holster is not solid plastic like on the really cheap meters, but it's not very soft either. It's kind of a hard rubber holster and it will probably offer some protection uh, given these shapes in the corners and the fact that the uh, LCD is uh, uh, recessed. Uh, it will probably protect against scratches on the LCD surface. The tilting bail is not much different from that of the Anang 8008, but I think the uh, rubber holster helps stabilize this uh, meter on the bench and prevents it from, uh, from sliding, while on the uh, Anang 8008 we just have the plastic body which will slide easy if we try to press 
one of the buttons. The battery cover is held with one screw, it has a metal threaded insert which makes it last longer because that screw will be used whenever you need to replace the batteries. Later in the video we'll also measure the consumption uh, of this multimeter just to estimate the battery life. The LCD screen is very disappointing in this multimeter. The digits are nice and crisp but the viewing angles are very bad. There is very limited angle where you get a clear view on this meter and as soon as you start shifting any direction the LCD starts to fade away badly. The backlight is ok even though it's a single sided LED. It provides decent illumination over the screen. However, the flashlight LED on the back also turns on at the same time with the backlight. So that will drain the battery faster even though you might not need the flashlight functionality. It's a crappy light source anyway. But I suppose one could open the meter and just remove the LED from the flashlight. When compared to the Anang 8008, I would say the 8008 8009 series of multimeters definitely have better viewing angles than this one has. Regarding the test leads, we're not going to expect excellent quality out of this. Uh, it's a $10 multimeter, so I'm gonna be objective and compare them with other $10 multimeter probes. Uh, they are short, about 70 centimeters total length, but I kind of like that I can work just fine with shorter leads. I get less of a clutter on the workbench. The uh, test leads themselves are also smaller and um, once again that's also fine for me. The wires are probably PVC, there are no markings uh, on the wire. They have a bit of strain relief on uh, uh, both ends and I would rate these as better than what I've seen on uh, the cheap pocket multimeters coming from China but still uh, a pretty low quality probe. I wouldn't want to be using something like this daily, occasionally maybe, beginner level maybe, but certainly not on a daily use. And I will say they don't really feel like they're safe for 10 amps measurement as they say on the probes themselves. I've tried a few measurements on this meter and I'm pleasantly surprised by how the auto detection feature and auto ranging works. It's pretty fast to determine the correct measurement and then pretty fast to auto range to the required range. I certainly wouldn't mind using this on the bench when considering the speed of the auto detection. You can see here I'm testing both a lower value resistor as well as a higher value and it jumps to the measurement quite fast. Same as with some DC voltage measurements, it's fast with a lowish 3 volts value and uh, equally fast with a higher 30 volts value. The continuity test is pretty slow but it is latched. It takes more than one second to register a signal and anything below 50 ohm will be confirmed with the beeper as well as visually with a red LED. In terms of accuracy the specs were not exciting to start with so I was pretty confident it was going to meet specs. I've run a few measurements on DC volts I was able to test up to 30 volts and the maximum error was 0.35% without subtracting any of the least significant digits allowed. On DC amps I've measured up to 5 amps and the maximum error was 0.75% without subtracting any least significant digits. And on resistance I've checked with my uh, resistance reference box and the maximum error was 0.4% once again without subtracting any of the least significant digits allowed. I think it was uh, 3 counts the specs allowed for. To measure power consumption I used my uh, joule scope, it's the perfect tool for this job. You can watch Voldog 211 for a review of this tool. And with the meter powered on but not measuring anything we got 1.3 milliamps and while measuring resistance we got 1.5 milliamps and turning on the backlight makes it go up to 6.8 milliamps. In standby the power usage is just 200 nanoamps. I must say that's an excellent uh, power usage overall and the meter will work and measure ok down to 2 volts on the battery terminals so it will use up almost all of the available energy in the AAA cells. Considering a typical 1000 mAh capacity 
AAA cell, the standby power usage is negligible. The battery shelf life is less than what the meter is taking in. Now, considering an average current of 1.4 milliamps between measuring and not measuring uh, anything, uh, we would get about 714 hours of usage, which is not bad at all. They definitely got the power usage right on this model of multimeter. I don't think we're going to see a lot of interesting stuff inside this multimeter, but we have to take it apart uh, anyway, and it's pretty simple to take apart. You just have to remove the rubber holster. Uh, there are a couple of self-tappers here. Now we can separate the two halves. The first thing I see is the battery spring contacts. That's a nice touch. There are no wires between the battery and the main board. And the next thing I notice is the typical cheap multimeter construction with very few external components. There is a 10 amp fuse protecting the amps input. It is replaceable, although finding a replacement would be very hard in this size. We then have this riser PCB on the amps input, which handles jack detection. This will tell the multimeter to go into current measurement mode when the probe is inserted. We have our shunt resistor, which looks like it could handle 10 amps. Then we have a bunch of melt resistors spaced between them to increase the creepage distance. The main IC is under that blob of epoxy. And of course they're gonna save a few cents here by not having a fully packaged IC. We have a date on the PCB version 0.5 from 7th July 2018. And we have another date code up here 1828 which is likely the 28th week uh, 2018 which would correspond to July as well. On the other side, we have no components, just the contacts for the switches. I must say there was no diode input protection, no metal oxide resistors, no spark gaps, just those resistors and the fuse on the amps input as protection. I'm pretty sure that's not enough and the meter uh, will likely die if subjected to higher voltages or currents, uh, especially transient voltages with potentially dangerous failing modes. If you use it strictly on low energy DC sources, then it should be fine, but I would be careful when using this to measure, for example, uh, a mains socket. So that was about all I had to say on this uh, little Anang uh, V01A meter. It was pretty much what we expected, low cost, almost uh, no input protection, it meets the accuracy specs, but they were not great to start with. And the LCD has some pretty crappy angles, uh, but the battery life is good. Overall, I would not recommend this over the Anang 8008 or 8009. I think these are better multimeters for approximately the same price. As usual, I would uh, appreciate your feedback in the comment section below. Maybe hit that like button and I'll see you next week with a new video.